All right, so welcome to episode number 55 of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. I am your host, Triple J. Joining me is my co-host, Dr. Games 101. Hey, what's up, guys? And uh, we're going to do what we do every two weeks, uh, talk about the latest news in gaming. Um, You ready to start? Oh, yeah. Okay. First story we got. The next Mafia game is in development. Hmm. Mafia celebrates its 20th anniversary today. And in a new blog post by Hangar 13, the principal minds behind the series reflect on its creation and history while also teasing what's next. Longtime Mafia designers Roman Haladik, who's the general manager, Thomas Herablek, head of production media director, and Alex Cox, game director, sat down to discuss Mafia's entire history and their most cherished moments of the franchise. It's worth a read if you consider yourself a diehard fan, but the most exciting news from the conversation is the confirmation that the next game in the series is in development. Hablick writes, I'm happy to confirm we've started work on an all-new Mafia project. While it's a few years away and we can't share anything more right now, we're really excited to keep working on this beloved franchise and to entertain our players with new stories. A few years away is a long time to wait, especially since the last mainline entry, Mafia 3, is approaching six years old, launching in October of 2016. But we're happy to see the series continue and are curious to see where it heads next. In 2020, Hangar 13 released enhanced remasters of all three games, the most substantial being a complete remake of the original dubbed Mafia Definitive Edition. Uh, What do you think is going to be... Have you played uh, any of the three Mafia games that already came out? Unfortunately, my friend, no. I will admit that because I could have played Mafia 3 as a demo, uh, especially in my recordings, but I never thought about going back to it. It's like the all three Mafia games. Because at one point, it was available for all three of them for about, as a bundle for about, I would say, 65, 60 bucks, give or take. And it was a good sor- source of, a, of an offer because you get all three Mafia games, the DLC, the costume packs, etc etc so it's like i didn't have the money at the time though so back like at least a year ago at least and uh yeah i wanted like first play the first two mafias then play mafia three but i never got a chance to both time and money especially money so yeah it's uh it, i'm sure it's a very good opportunity to play mafia for the fourth time um this time hopefully it's a sequel rather than a you know a, a, like a different mid quilt type of system because because it's true that back in the 1960s and, and 70s, the the blacks of like during the Black Panthers and all, they tried to overtake the streets again because of the mafia activity going on in their neighborhoods. And this is Mafia Three was supposed to be based upon that matter in a similar fashion. So it's a uh, it's a little kind of. story, yeah, kind of, yeah. Because because there was actual black mafia back in the 1960s, and there's a movie out there called American Gangster with Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington talking about this matter in a loose term. So it's kind of like you know if, if you watch that first and then play Mafia Three, I'm sure you get a good idea of what's all oh, like, like that moment. Like wow, so it's good, good, hard is good games, good stuff. Um, okay, well, uh, you didn't play Mafia 2, because that was, that, uh, we got Mafia 2 from Games with Gold. We did? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I got it from Games with Gold. Well, do you know what year it came out? I could look it up. Okay, because when Mafia 2 was on Games with Gold, I must have been still in the hospital at the time, back in 2016, I believe. So, it's, uh, that was the last year I've been in any form of, uh, visitation to, for mental illness really matters. So, it's, uh... Back then, it was different times, and uh, didn't have all the time in the world because I was in that it, hospital. So, but it yeah. came out. Uh, it came out in May of 2015. Wow, how did I miss that? That's weird because I was still home at the time. I was still going. I just started going to gym first time in like seven years, eight years back then, and I've been going to gym since whenever I can. And yeah, I'll yeah, definitely I, check I, my I, library. I'll definitely check my library if I still have it. Okay, that was. The second Mafia game, um, it was supposed to be like the May 1st to May 15th game, right? For at least for 360. Um, but uh, yeah, I have it, um, played it all the way through. Okay. The first Mafia, although let's let's uh, let's look at what has already been done in Mafia. The first Mafia was like the early 40s, right? And that was like in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Um, the second Mafia was the late 40s and early 50s because your character spends a few years in jail in the middle of the game and that was um in new york city 
Right. Mafia Three was the nineteen sixties, and that was in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what? Like, uh, if we were, t- if Mafia was to follow the same path, uh, do you know where the f- uh, where the most mob business was like in the nineteen seventies? It well, the the, pr- the prominent from what I've re- based on our research and also looking at a book called The Rise and Fall of the 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 New York Gangsters. Uh, a paraphrase of the book. I'll glance at it for a few few pages. Uh, basically, during the times of 1940s or 1920s into the 40s is the the, the, the rise of the of the the gangsters of the mafia and such and such uh, because of the uh, the prohibition. Everything else kind of created that to create that right. family. Then by the 1950s to the 70s, that's when it was prominent in, in mainstream into the communities. Like you know, from like you know, far far back as like you know here in here in my town, Jamaica, Queens, to other parts like Harlem, uh, Southern Pennsylvania, uh, perhaps in um, California, those type of areas that, that's prominent of mafia activity. And then by after the 2000s, that's when John Gotti and the Gambino crime family started to, you know, started to have problems, sort of maintain their little order because it's been exposed by the mayor of Rudy Giuliani firsthand, I guess you'll call it like that. And it just created this dissolution between the, the, the mafia gangs and you know, everyone snitching on everyone. And then since the twenty tens, we see a reemergence re- 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 of it. But since the uh, the kid, the, th- the, the the son of either it was Frank Cali. Uh, Frank Cali was one of the uh, mob bosses of the Gambinos, and he got killed by some average dude within the gang. So it was like an internal struggle. So whatever's going on for the past ten to fifteen years now, it's not steady. It's not as populated or popular to join these gangs. So it's kind of like you know everyone's trying to avoid them. In my perspective, that is because. Uh, to be honest with you, I I heard of, I heard things about these guys live, being in these communities for many decades, and it was all about making business, not about trying to start personal wars with one another. So, but yeah, um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, interesting to see that the stories like that in the, in the game are resemblance of what happened for over the last fifty to sixty years. So, okay, um, so. Yeah, I'm trying to find out, but they they just keep bringing up New York. Uh, myself, I'm I'm just wondering. You know, I figured uh, they had a timeline. Like the '40s was Illinois, early '40s, mm-hmm. late '40s, early '50s, New York City. '60s was in Chicago. I had no idea what happened in Chicago in the '60s until Game Informer brought that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, their first preview of Mafia Three. The Black Panthers um, were around during that time, and there was a Chicago shootout in the 1960s as well. It's around 1969, 1968, or say 1970, give or take. So, so. I, so I figured if there is a Mafia 4, they're just going to continue the timeline. 1970 and wherever the most mob activity was happening. Um, if they really want to, if the creators could look back on the history of, of the Mafias, the five families here in New York City, it still exists somewhat. Uh, but they're not out there, out and about, making huge deals or huge activities. But, you know, they can make a sequel to what happened with Frank Cali and other bomb bosses like the Genovese crime family, the Lucci's crime family, you know, like, put, like, a little bit of a spin on it. You know, I think people would like more about it. Because they did that with uh, their movie Irishman. That's a three-hour movie. I never seen the movie, but I saw the trailer. It looks good to watch. But no one's into the gangster stuff anymore, from what I hear. Just based on what... Uh, radio show hosts are saying, and they're like, you know, because the younger crowd like us, like, a younger, we never really lived through the struggle of joining gangs or struggle of, like, being part of a gang activity or, or gang mentality. Th- that depends on who you talk to and what part of the United States. So, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so a new Mafia game is coming. It's still in, it's still a few years away from happening. Um, I figure, I don't know where they're going to go with it, um, but my biggest guess is that based on the history of the Mafia games, they're going to go to the 1970s, but where the story's going to take place, it could be anywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah it could be Chicago, it could be uh, New York, California, uh, perhaps even, um, hell, if they, if they really want to, they can get involved with the Yakuza and the, uh, the Triads, uh, the Yakuza in Japan and Triads in, the, in China. They still exist somewhere. That don't they can do that spin off of that too. You never yeah, know. Yeah, they, right? they well they've had uh they had games like based on the Yakuza. Um yeah, I would just the only the only the only thing I would want that I know I would want right now from the next Mafia sequel is um to be in a place that we haven't been yet. 
like I said, already had games take place in Illinois, New York City, and Chicago. If there was stories to tell in the 70s in uh, one of those places in a different place that I didn't mention, mm-hmm. have the game take place there. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but we'll know more as the game continues to get completed and... Uh, like I said, it's a few years. It's still a few years away. Oh yeah, definitely. Ready to move on? Oh yeah. Okay. Next. EA owns itself. Accidentally leaks FIFA 23 a month early. Some folks who pre-ordered FIFA 23's Ultimate Edition got the game far earlier than they were supposed to. As if EA wasn't going through enough this month. What with Man 23's. Man 23's botched launch upsetting even pro athletes it seems a certain segment of FIFA 23 players have gained access to the soccer simulator one whole month before its September 30th release date. Talk about a score. Um, Players who pre-ordered the game's ultimate edition were already slated to get access to FIFA 23 three days before its official release, letting them play the game on September 27th instead of September 30th. However, according to IGN and Eurogamer, a mistake of some sort allowed ultimate edition buyers to accidentally hit the soccer sims fields one whole month early, letting them check out the entire game and every team's roster way ahead of FIFA 23's official launch. These lucky early players have shared a high number of deets with the public from the FIFA Ultimate Teams mode stats to the new gear, footballers, wear, and much more. It's unclear just how this leak happened, but VG but Video Game Chronicles suggest it was a portion of the player base that had access to the recent beta test and were playing it on Xbox consoles. Updating their beta test versions somehow gave them full access to all of FIFA 23's final modes. Some were even live streaming the game on Twitch, like User Mexico 07 Dan 1, before the channels were quickly scrubbed and terminated. EA is also reportedly just banning anyone caught playing FIFA 23 early. Still, these sort of consequences haven't stopped the series' dedicated fans from posting their findings. In fact, Reddit, Twitter, and YouTube are inundated with leaked details. There's Cristino Ronaldo 80s. Ronaldo's 81 rating, a downgrade from the 91 he was assigned in FIFA 22. Some folks have demonstrated the FIFA Ultimate Teams mode UI in copious videos. Hell, even part of the game's soundtrack were made public. If you care about spoilers, be careful out there right now. So, um, Kotaku has reached out to EA for comment. There's no word on how EA will handle this leak. Well, while the publisher is allegedly banning players, it's unclear if their progress would be wiped alongside the Swift takedown. Despite this, it seems some players are still checking out FIFA 23 offline before it drops. The fearlessness is unmatched. So, uh, what do you think about these people who got FIFA 23 a month early and how um, the publisher decided to handle things by banning players? It's not, the, it's not the player's fault. It's, the, it's that of EA themselves. But I'm very surprised they would let that leak or let that, that type of format of that game be taken out, out of its uh, proper the release. Because how does that EA make that kind of big mistake there right there? Because I got we saw from the inside trying to expose something to the to the rest of the gaming community if ever by looks of things. It sounds like conspiratorial, whatever you want to call it, but you know it's something to think about uh, how you know. The people inside the company don't want to stay within their gatekeeping ways and means to make sure that the, the product is currently and properly released, you know? So, that's something so like you that. think it was dev- a devious job from an insider? Something of that sort. But at the same time, for what, what's the purpose? You try to show players that it's repetitive or it's, in, it's the game itself is better or what, you know? So. Yeah, um, it's just... It's just uh, I think some people or most people are looking at it as EA being EA. Right. You know, if the Madden 23 story two weeks ago wasn't enough, now we got this. Mm-hmm. So, um, but banning players is not the right thing to do. I mean, like you said, it's not their fault. They're just taking advantage of something that, that they were able to access. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not like they hacked the game or something. They just, you know, just something that EA screwed up, gave people access and mm-hmm. 
at least they should be allowed back at least when the game launches, maybe. Oh yeah. But uh, we'll, but we'll see if. But I mean, next time EA screws up, we'll definitely report on it. Um, ready to move on? Yes, I am. I'm ready. Okay. Next. Sons of the Forest delayed one last time to early 2023. End Night Games The Forest became one of my favorite co-op experiences almost two years after its launch. And when more Sons of the Forest footage was revealed the following year in 2021, my excitement level reached an all-time high. Sadly, the sequel has been delayed again, but the devs seem confident in a horror survival game's early 2023 release period. End Night Games post on Twitter says in recent months an exact drop date has been hard to pinpoint, but the newfound scope led to the team's hard decision. Uh, due to the scope of a new game, Sons of the Forest, it has been hard to pinpoint an exact release date, and today we have to delay one last time. Giving us time to complete the polish we feel is needed, we will release February 2023, um, 23, 2023 priced at $29.99 uh, US dollars. Based on trailers, Sons of the Forest is the studio's most ambitious title yet, with a vast open world, a new AI companion, uh, updated visuals, and multiple warring factions scattered throughout the landscape. It looks to be even more brutal and terrifying than the last game, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Sons of the Forest splatters onto our screen next year, from February 23rd, I guess it's a PC exclusive. Um... We talked about this game, did we not? On hmm. like older epi- on an older episode? Not sure exactly. Um, go back to it my it notes. sounds familiar. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's the one we talked about. The other is that the one with that trailer where it showed like the guy walking across the, the wooden the wooden plank, and that's it. Like it's just that's it. Is that just a trailer? Is that what you were referring to? I I don't think that was it. Uh, because that game was um. I don't think so. I see. But I could be, I could be wrong. Unfortunately, I didn't see the, the actual trail of that title of that video just yet, so I can't say much about it right this second. Yeah, I mean, at least, hey, you know what? Um, when it comes to games that have to be, uh, when it comes to games that have to be um, delayed, you know, a delay is always better than a rush product release. So. Definitely. Yeah, look, look, at they, uh, look at Halo Infinite. Look at Halo Infinite. They gave we gave one another year, and still the product was still not properly ready yet. It was it's ridiculous that how the the, the timeline there, the way they want to format the games into public release is not currently that good enough to spur, spring up the sales of games altogether. Because you know, because they rush it, they keep rushing it over and over, and it's ridiculous. So hopefully this force of this four sons of the forest game will be a, a good a good addition to the twenty twenty three lineup. So yeah, um, so PC gamers keep an eye out for that. Um, mm-hmm. We'll let you know uh, more about it as we hear about it. Um, ready to move on? Yes, I am ready. Okay, next. Let's. See. I guess I think I'm gonna have something to talk about this. Call of Duty, Overwatch, and Diablo will come to Game Pass, says Phil Spencer. All right, this isn't the one I was thinking of. In a new blog post, Xbox heard Phil Spencer dif- discuss Microsoft's intentions for Activision Blizzard's IPs following its ongoing acquisition of the company. Among these plans, naturally, is to holster the value of Xbox Game Pass Welcome by ad- adding Activision Blizzard's library of titles, including Call of Duty, Overwatch, and Diablo. Spencer discusses expanding player choice through Game Pass by offering library titles for an affordable subscription fee, appealing to players of various budgets. Spencer hopes that including Activision Blizzard games will make the service more appealing to existing and potential subscribers. We need to make Activision Blizzard's much-loved library of games, including Overwatch, Diablo, and Call of Duty, available in Game Pass and to grow these gaming communities. By delivering even more value to players, we hope to continue growing Game Pass, extending its appeal to mobile phones and any connected device. Spencer also reiterates Microsoft's promise to keep popular Activision Blizzard franchises multi-platform, citing its handling of Minecraft as an example. Additionally, the company hopes to expand Activision's portfolio to mobile platforms and make them available to play on other devices via cloud streaming. Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard is projected to be completed sometime during the summer of 2023. 
After that, it's anyone's guess as to how long it will be before we see these franchises land on Game Pass. On the Blizzard side, Overwatch 2 launches in a free-to-play early access on October 4th, and Diablo 4 is seemingly years away. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 releases in October, but the series will reportedly skip 2023, meaning the first entry under the Microsoft banner won't be until 2024 at the earliest. Um, so what do you think of these franchises coming to Game Pass? It's a very surprising uh, move on Microsoft's end, uh, especially with Phil Spencer and Xbox. Because Phil Spencer was an interview sometime earlier this month of September, if not late last month of August, with uh, Bloomberg, uh, which is one of those uh, news uh, economic news stations somewhere here in the United States. And uh, he spoke, spoke some good stuff for what's going to come to be of, of the future of consoles over the next five to ten years at the most. And he did say, he, he didn't promise this, but there's going to be a chance where the console itself, or the supposed console that you will, will currently have with Xbox One, PS4, and so on and so forth, uh, those are not those going to be the thing of the past, or it's going to be just like a, a part of the services, and that's it. Um, beyond beyond just the console itself, in a sense. So, Call of Duty, Overwatch, you know, I already bought Overwatch many years ago. I bought it since, since 2016. I play some, sometimes with once in a while with other kids I want to play with, that, that want me to play with them online, uh, but that's about it. Um, now, it comes to Diablo, if they refer to Diablo 2, I would definitely see that see that happen and, and make make something of that good good sense of a uh, of that game Diablo two. I have to, but by Diablo three and especially by Diablo the the, the newest the like Diablo Diablo Immortal, if they can port that to the Xbox One without the microtransactions, that'd be a great addition too. So, yeah, so it's gonna yeah. be interesting for over the next couple of years or so. Yeah, um, Overwatch. I've never played. I've really never played Diablo either but i mean both games would be great to try on game pass um if call of duty makes it to game pass that would probably be the franchise i'm most interested in from activision blizzard um we are going to talk about uh the seeming like uh war going on between microsoft and uh playstation over call of duty uh we'll be discussing that later actually i thought that's what we were going to talk about now um but we'll get into that story later um, so yeah, so I mean, over, you know, I got Game Pass, um, it's a great, it's, you know, it's a lot easier to pay $15 a month and have access to over 300 games than to buy these games $60 a pop for most of them. Yeah, and by the time so, you finish with them, it might take you to like a six months to like a couple of years, and that's it. That's because the average game post lasts you for at least a year, give or take, depends on what kind of game it is at all, so and how much you want to put time into it. And uh, Call of Duty is one of those games where it got to take at least a couple of years to make something, take some ground in that game with the progression system. And especially with Infinite Warfare, Black Ops 3 I want to play. I got Infinite Warfare already on, as a copy, but uh, Black Ops 3 would be great to have up in my library. So yeah, if they can put all the Call of Duty games all, in, under, or at least the major ones, like I mentioned, those would be a great part of the Game Pass. And it'll make people go back to the Xbox as well, too, to save money. So those who could afford a PS5, they can buy Xbox Series S and X, or an Xbox One to play the older Call of Duty games, that's if they ever did that. So, Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, although on the Xbox One original, I don't know about every Call of Duty game, but I know a lot of Call of Duty games are backwards compatible. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you have, like, Call of Duty games for the 360, just put the disc in, you'll be ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, this is, and this is great, because more choices mean it's gonna, it's gonna freshen up the menu, it's gonna freshen up, uh, the choices we have. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, and like I said, we'll cover the war between, uh, PlayStation and Xbox later, since they're getting... A little spicy about the possible future of Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. Um, ready to move on? Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm ready. All right. All right. Next. Uh, PlayStation Plus free games for September 2022 revealed. Next month's PlayStation Plus Essential lineup is pretty solid. Following a leak, PlayStation has confirmed the next batch of PlayStation Plus freebies. September 2022's PlayStation Plus Essential lineup will include Need for Speed Heat, Tome, and Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, 
All three of those games are worth playing, so it'll be a pretty good month overall for freebies on PlayStation. The new batch of games will be available to claim starting September 6th. That was four days ago. As a reminder, all PlayStation Plus subscribers, regardless of tier, can claim the PlayStation Plus Essential lineup each month. More games are also available for extra and premium members. Need for Speed Heat is the best known game of the bunch. But yeah, it's the only game I recognized of the bunch. It's the latest entry, not including remasters, in a long running EA racing franchise and a turn in the right direction. The franchise went down a bumpy road throughout the 2010s, but Need for Speed Heat recaptured the pure arcade racing fun that the series was known for in its early days. Featuring a cool night and day system in which you compete in sanctioned events by day and illegal street races after dark, Need for Speed Heat offers a decent amount of variety that keeps the arcade racing fresh throughout its roughly 10 hour one time. It earned a 7 out of 10 hour Need for Speed Heat review. Need for Speed Heat doesn't have a PS5 upgrade, but you can play it on the latest, latest PlayStation console via backwards compatibility. Tom is a charming indie that released just last year. You play as a young photographer in search of a snapshot of the eponymous uh, Tom phenomenon. If you're looking for a relaxing game that won't take up too much time, Tom is a good choice. The gameplay revolves around solving puzzles by taking photographs of the world around you. The black and white visuals are lovely and the gameplay is complemented by a beautiful soundtrack. Only the per PS5 version of Tome will be available to claim in September. Honestly sounds a little boring if you ask me. <laughs> fighting games can check out um, fighting game fans can check out Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, a 2.5D fighting game developed by Arc System Works. Featuring the, featuring the characters that first appeared in the Grand Blue Fantasy mobile game in 2014, Versus is a stylish fighter with great mechanics. It also implements RPG systems, which is fitting considering the first Grand Blue Fantasy game was an RPG. The single player campaign isn't very exciting, but the core fighting mechanics are great. They earned a 7 out of 10 in our Grand Blue Fantasy Versus review. If you haven't already, make sure to claim August freebies before they leave PlayStation Plus on September 6th. August's lineup includes Yakuza Like a Dragon, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, and LOL Nightmares. Hmm. Well, those games are gone by now since it's September 10th. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation is also adding new games to the PlayStation Plus Extra Premium Library next month, including Deathloop, Chicory, A Colorful, Ta a Colorful Tale, and Assassin's Creed Origins. So, um, of the three games, uh, did you, what do you think of these three games? Have you heard of these three? I mean, it I is, only know Need for Speed because of the franchise. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I did play Little Nightmares the other month or two last year or earlier this year. Um, sometime played about twenty minutes with you guys on my on my gaming channel. Uh, the Xbox One, that is. I also have a copy of it on the PC. A little Nightmare is a little challenging. It's all right. Got like like this this uh, kid who's like kind of old and like ten years old, walking around in the dark and seeing all these monsters and weird things popping out, scrabbing him, and he shines a light on them and they, they scurry away and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a a mini horror, but you know, uh, you know, like a child related theme type of uh, game of sorts. So it's not bad. Uh, Need for Speed. I played the game when I was younger, especially when I was in college with a group of friends at one point. I forgot which one that I played though back in the 2000s. Then it's the third one. Um, what's that you mentioned about the third one? It's a fighting game you said? So I never heard that one either. So. Yeah, Grand Blue Fantasy versus. Unless if it's, let's refer to the, the Ruby characters, that's one of those games I like to get my hands on because I know that if it's refer, if it refers to the Blue the Blue series it's called or Blue the Blue game that, that refers to the, the Ruby games the Ruby series so of Yang the Weiss and Ruby Rose and stuff such and such so it's uh, yeah I think I'll get a copy of that myself and that's if I have PlayStation though. But thank goodness to my friend, you know, from uh, from Texas, you know, he actually gave me a, he donated a PlayStation 3 for me not too long ago, so. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll try, I'll try to, I'm trying to find out more of me how to set the, the account up, because I think that made this new account system that I have to sign up, they go on the computer, and it's, it's, a, it's a huge process, and it's ridiculous. I had to call the PlayStation store and see if we can Well, if it's PlayStation there. 3, I mean, most of the servers are going to be shut down anyway. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, I mean, they even shut down the PlayStation Store, so, 
um, yeah, Need for Speed Heat, obviously that's going to be a fun game. It sounds interesting, especially with the day-to-night transitions and different activities available depending what uh, time of day it is. Mm-hmm. Tome sounds absolutely boring. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you need you need more than visuals, and I get it. It's supposed to be like a relaxing game. Yeah. But I mean, I think I'm I think I'm the one that's more um, tolerant of these relaxing games than you are. I mean, you tr- you played What Remains of Edith Finch and you hated it. Uh, you saw me sleeping on camera too at one point. Yeah, so you hated that game, and I thought it was pretty good. I thought it told a great story. Just you had to be able to get to do the story. Yes, it's rewarding. It's rewarding. I'm certain if I keep playing it, but it's like the game Beyond Eyes that I played the other year or two, and uh, you know you see a, a clip of it on my gaming channel channel from gaming channel channel trailer from 2018, which is still on my main channel as well as my gaming channel. So uh, yeah, that was okay experience too, but it was still calm and too boring at times. That's that's the problem with it, with these games like that, like Eva Finch and beyond ice so yeah and grand blue fighting i mean they already said that the single player campaign is not that great it's like what well, why, why even play it i mean it, it definitely sounds like what they were offering in august was a lot better oh yeah i mean that but then again there are hit and miss months and hey with microsoft their games with gold i mean oh, yeah. we really don't have much room to brag um yeah but ready to move on Oh yeah, okay. Because I think it's next. I think next we're covering uh, Microsoft Games with Gold. Yep. Yep. Xbox Games with Gold for September 2022. Two free games available now. September is the final month for backwards compatible classics, but at least we're getting out and we're going out in style with Portal 2. We're at the start of a new another new month, so that means it's time to claim some freebies on Xbox Store. If you're a Game Pass Ultimate or Xbox Live Gold subscriber, of course. September's Games with Gold lineup currently features Gods Will Fall and Thrillville. You can also claim one of August's freebies, Scorchbringer, until September 16th. Halfway through the month, the lineup will refresh with Double Kick Heroes and Portal 2. As a reminder, it's the last month for original Xbox and Xbox 360 freebies in the Games with Gold program. But keep in mind that you will be able to keep all the backwards compatible games you've claimed up until now. Even if your Xbox Live Gold subscription lapses, that means Portal 2 will be free to keep, which is pretty cool. Portal 2 is the star of the show in September. The classic puzzle shooter is widely considered to be one of the best games of its era. The sequel expanded greatly on the already brilliant foundation of the original. Featuring a campaign that's roughly double the length of its predecessor, Portal 2 added some seriously great mechanics to the formula. If you had never played Portal 2, and I've played neither, do yourself a favor and check it out next month. It even has a separate cooperative campaign that you can play alongside a friend. Portal 2 will be free in the back half of September. Prior to Portal 2 landing on the service, you can add Thrillville to your Xbox library. This was a weird choice since they just offered Thrillville off the rails in August. Thrillville is an amusement park management sim that originally released in 2006. If you've ever played Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I did and I loved it, Thrillville isn't all that different, but it does have an actual narrative. Along with managing the park's day-to-day activities, you have to complete missions to move on. There are five parks in total to oversee. Thrillville also has a bunch of mini-games that can be played solo or with friends. You can grab Thrillville until September 15th. We started with the backwards compatible classics because they are just a bit more exciting than the Xbox One games for September. Way to, way to build, uh, build the Xbox One titles up. All month long, subscribers will be able to claim Gods Will Fall, an action game that released last year. You play as a Celtic warrior in a fight against the numerous gods that control the world. Gods Will Fall does offer an interesting spin on a roguelike genre and features challenging combat, so it's worth checking out if you like those sorts of action games. Rhythm game fans should give Double Kick Hero a try when it's up for grabs starting September 16th. The side-scrolling action game features, features musical instruments as weapons to slave off hordes of zombies. There are 24 levels with heavy metal music to work your way through. The soundtrack includes a handful of licensed tracks, and you can make your own music with the included level editor. 
Okay, that sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think of these? Uh, so, what do you think of what we're getting for Xbox games with gold? Well, if you're referring to the September 2022 lineup, and how we see yeah. we're right now, currently in the middle of it, pretty much. And uh, I didn't play any of the newer games that I saw. Well, the guys will fall. The, the guy, what's it called? It's guys will fall. Gods, gods will fall. Yeah, guys will fall. I want to play that game. That looks very appealing. Uh, while the rest of the games, well, it's all right. So I'm sure it's not bad to play, but. Not, not, not for, not for the stick stick on for a few weeks or if not months at a time. Um, like I remember, I remember Hollow Knight, our Clover Hollow Knight was available for games with gold. So I bought it by, I bought, I got a copy of that, and that was a good game during its time, and it's still good to to say to play Hollow Knight. So that was very appealing. Um, other than that, of this for this month, you know, hopefully the second half of the month will be available with other games out there. I've got the was it one of the two games again that are coming out as between September fifteenth and September thirtieth again, James? Um, they said Double Kick Heroes and Portal Two. Portal Two, now that I would definitely want to play. Okay, now that yeah, <laughs> I think the first Portal is a mind fuck of its own. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never played two. either of the Portal games, so I, I, you like I mean, it. I'll definitely download it, but I'm, I'll be going in blind. Yeah, you like, you like, if you like, if you play Portal One, you like Portal Two. So, okay, so I'll it's definitely a big deal. Yeah. yeah, it was a big launch of its time back. It was in 2000 and what 13, 2014, give or take. So it's, uh, you know, it was one of the biggest launches at the time. And I'm not sure much about Portal 2, but the first Portal, you know, you gotta think for a second, you know, here and there. And uh, if you're not careful, it can be a death of you too. So it's uh, very challenging back then, the first Portal. Second Portal, I'm sure it'd be much better, more challenging than ever. So, because you, you survive after the first Portals, obviously. So. Alright. Uh, so with me, Gods Will Fall... It- that's either going to be hit or miss. Um, I can. I've. I've already downloaded Gods Will Fall and Thrillville, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. So Gods will, it will Fall will either be hit or miss. I'm a big fan of the Roller Coaster Tycoon games. I had the first Roller Coaster Tycoon game, so Thrillville will probably be something I do enjoy. Um, if you watch me play Two Point Campus, you know those man- management type of games I, I like to play. Um, so. Thrillville, I have Thrillville off the rails, and now I have the original Thrillville. Um, Double Kick Heroes, uh, it sounds like, um, it it sounds interesting. Um, You know, so I'm definitely going to be giving that a chance, and like you said, you vouch for Portal too, so. Yeah, because the first Portal was good, so I'm and it was a big launch, a big deal at the time when it was released, Portal 2, so, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, if yeah, so uh, these, so you know, well, I'll definitely be. Uh, I downloaded two. I'll definitely be getting the other two, and we'll be checking them out. Um, but honestly, I just hope Games with Gold. I don't know what they're going to be delivering in October and on, but they said this is the end of backwards compil backwards compatibility. So it's going to be 360 games. Uh, no more 360 games, just Xbox One. I'm like, do they really have enough indie games even? To yeah. keep games of gold going, yeah, they better have to uh, reduce the price of Game Pass and or make gold free. And my younger players out there, they agree with they, they agree among each other. And it, they always been saying this for years now. They say that like, oh, games of gold should, or oh, Xbox Gold should be free altogether after this happened, especially after this, where the lack of content for the gold system or gold benefits. So yeah, I'll agree with them on that part. But I think beforehand, if they keep doing the games with gold every month for a few more years, that'll be great. If not, but like you said, it's, there's a, this announcement out there saying that they're gonna stop doing Xbox 360 games with worth gold, especially Xbox One original. So it's like, you know, do I really need to keep buying gold constantly? Should I go back to the PC? But with the PC, do I have the specs and the features for my PC to play these games? So that's the problem too. So it's kind of like you know, you're playing. Hit and miss with both consoles or both uh, the Xbox and the PCs, and it really seems Game Pass is just the best part because you got access to over. Th- I, I've actually counted. There's like uh, the one time I counted, there was like 350 titles or 300, like 346 titles, something around there, um, mm-hmm. available on Game Pass um, oh, yeah. for the console. Anyway, um, 
So it's kind of like having that and getting games with gold included is something that's good. But yeah, if they're going to start to run out of titles, and I think they will, um, unless they start adding new titles like Far Cry Six and stuff. Okay. Um, it'd be best just to get rid of. It'd be best just to get rid of games with gold and bring Game Pass down to ten dollars a month. Oh yeah. Or twelve fifty if that's too if ten dollars is too cheap. Yeah, well the original because the original Game Pass uh, price was nine ninety nine a month, so you figure. Oh, oh, so it was that cheap at yes. one time. Yes. Now it's fourteen ninety nine a month for the ultimate for both game games of gold and as well as um, Game Pass. So. Well, if you think about it, that if they, I mean, you know, we don't know what's happening to games with gold. It might be around for five, ten more years, as far as we know. Yeah. But. You know, if they if if uh, Microsoft ever does get rid of it, they should definitely uh, well with the price of Game Pass because that because getting rid of games of gold would mean Game Pass is losing something of its appeal. Also, mm-hmm. of course, we're speaking from a consumer standpoint. Uh, they probably have a reason not to. Um, so only time will tell. Um, oh yeah. But like I said, uh, this has twenty twenty two has really been like a telling month. For how bad games with gold has been and how mediocre it's been. Oh yeah. Indeed. Um. So yeah. So, uh, but I mean, heck, you know, like I said, uh, Thrillville, Portal Two, and Double Kick Hero sounds fun. So, at least this month sounds like we're getting good games. Oh yeah. Uh, ready to move on? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Next. Halo Infinite won't get split-screen co-op, but players have worked out how to do it now. Split-screen uh, finds a way. Following the news that Halo Infinite will no longer be getting split-screen local co-op, some players have already discovered a way to take advantage of a menu glitch to make it happen. As reported by Eurogamer, Zenny IC on Twitter discovered that players on Xbox Series can use a menu glitch to add three local co-op players to their game. You can check out how it works in the tutorial by Halo Creation below and read the steps after the video. So, okay, here's... here's so, so, after checking on Series X, the many glitches to play Halo Infinite campaign split-screen still work. No crash in cutscenes, no issue with the AIs, etc. Never thought I would have to go through this to play with friends at home. Probably release a small tutorial later. Oh, here are the steps of Eurogamer, Xeno, IC, and Halo Creation. Uh, go to the campaign menu and load a save. Click play and get ready to quickly go to your friends list. As soon as loading map appears, go to your friend list and join a friend who's idling in the menus. You can then leave the fire team. In the custom lobby, under server, select offline. You can now connect your other controllers and profiles. Click play. Obviously, 343 Industries may patch out unintentionally break this feature with future updates, and there is no guarantee it won't crash your Xbox, delete saves, etc., but it appears to be a way to play with friends at home on one couch. After checking on Series X, the many glitches to play Halo Infinite campaign split-screen still work. No crash in cutscenes, no issue, Halo creation said, never... Well, already read that part. Despite promising the... Uh, the feature, 343 Industries confirmed it would no longer be bringing split-screen local co-op to Halo Infinite, as it is instead going to focus on improving and accelerating ongoing live service development and more. In order to improve and accelerate ongoing live service development and to better address player feedback and quality of life updates, we have reallocated studio resources and are no longer working on local campaign split-screen co-op, said 343 Industries. The news was shared alongside a glimpse into the future of Halo Infinite, which includes Forge Mode and the full release of online campaign co-op on November 8th and much more. Uh, So what do you think of this? Well, you're the Halo fan. Um, You're the bigger Halo fan than I am. So (laughs) what do you think of this? Well, here's the screwed up part on on, 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 um, 343's end. Not only they made a mistake of putting that split screen co-op in, they also, got, they also already patched up the, that split screen co op. A major turn off altogether. They knew people as, as old as us, old as us gamers, that wanted that, that feature of split screen. And yes, people, we have friends. Yes, people, we have some kind of life with other people in our neighborhood that we want to bring to our house to play games with. Yes, 
there's internet online, you can do it at other parts of the internet or of the world, whatever. But my friends or people I know in my neighborhood or at least within the city, you know, hey, I want to bring them over to my place to play some games with in a split screen fashion. This is ridiculous. Like, how can FIFA 3 patch it up already? Or, or, or already going to be at, at this rate? And they knew that they, they lack content for many months now. For at least, at least nine months now has been a problem. And of course, let last late last year, November the 20th anniversary of Xbox and uh, Halo all together, right? No big deal. That's a good celebration. But after all that, it seems that the holidays went went away and it's over with. And now it's the new year, technically speaking. Now, you know, it's now it's like who's really playing Halo Infinite on a constant basis? Last time I played Halo Infinite was at least a day ago. I mean, I used to play every day of Halo Master Chief Collection whenever I can. And I play this that still to this day. But Halo Infinite, I don't really play as much, and I don't play the campaign as much. It's been almost a year since the campaign been out, and I still didn't get a chance to beat the, uh, what's it called, the, the, the fourth boss, or whatever, with the, the, uh, with the, what's it called, the chopper uh, boss. It's called the, with the chopper and all, with the machine. So it's kind of like, you know, it's... You know, it's not memorable at the same time. It's it's you know it's memorable. It's Halo Infinite, three four three. They just messed up. They they messed up completely. And they better off just like scrapping the game or create, create get rid of the season altogether and just revamp the whole game altogether. But that's gonna take time, money, effort, and they're not gonna spend the money for the matter. At least that. And, um, and even the the newest person that was there maintained the the multiplayer services. The guy was. Was, was being snarky and, you know, being like condescending and saying, oh, yeah, we're going to give you this, yeah, we're going to give you that, yada, yada, yada. That's what he said somewhat on the uh, the 30-minute um, stream of the Halo um, update. So, yeah. Okay, so they so this has already been um, yeah patched, basically. Oh, I'm, or about to be patched over the next few days last as of last week. Okay, so yeah, they, they make time for that. They make time to patch that up, but they don't make the time to put more content into the game of like having uh, what's it called, four v four and eight v eight, and have all these maps for each of the four v four, eight v eight um, mode and stuff like that. Yes, I I do accept that I'm very acceptable of the team arena, but make it more while worthwhile by adding more onto it, not removing it every season because every season it resets itself. That's very ridiculous. Like because Halo Reach had a good progression system. You unlock weapons and or not weapons, but like these the skins and the armor and stuff like that. Uh, you get changed the loadout. I think at one point. So it's like I don't know what FIFA Three is doing, but they're not they're, they're not keeping my attention on Halo Infinite. So that's all I got to say. Yeah. So okay. So um, if you enjoy playing Halo Infinite, uh, we don't know if they patched it up yet, but they're going to. So uh, this will only work for so long. Um, and what do you think of them saying they're still they're still bringing up Forge mode? They're still bringing up. Um, they're basically saying we're focusing on Forge mode and online stuff. Uh, any response to that? Well, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't know what they're doing anymore. I, I, I'm not saying I gave up playing Halo Infinite altogether, but eventually there's going to be a point in time where I'm not going to play it at all. And, you know, oh sure, there's the campaign I can play for a few more hours. There's the multiplayer of the team arena. But even that reset, like I said, it resets itself every season. So it's like, what's the point of keep playing it? And there's no record, there's no progression, there's no way to unlock skins, unlock content altogether. And it's like, there's, there's selling skins like Dope Tomorrow, but they'll focus on selling you skins for all day, every day. It's like 20 bucks here, $10 for skins here, each price. Like, What's the spend ten dollars on a skin or even twenty bucks? Are you thinking I'm that crazy? Like, come <laughs> on. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so I mean, people have not really been happy with Halo Infinite. Um, I'm not a Halo fan, so I really can't speak on this. I thought the uh, split screen co-op was a cool glitch that people found out, but I mean, it just seems like uh, Halo Infinite would be better off just scrapped completely. You think fans yes. would be happier if that's what was done, or? Mm hmm Okay. okay. Alright, so, anyway, um, ready to move on? Yeah. Alright, next. 
Metal Hellsinger, Disney Dreamlight Valley lead this month's Xbox Game Pass editions. Microsoft has revealed the September lineup of Xbox Game Pass games coming to the subscription service. If you're looking for something new to play today, and this was written on four days ago, uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley, the adventure game that mixes quest, exploration, and more with life simulation gameplay, will be available to download later today. On both PC and Xbox Game Pass, players will have access to the Founders Edition of the game, which gives players early access, exclusive cosmetic rewards, and a starting pile of in-game currency. For more about this exciting life sim from Disney, uh, you can read Game Informer's preview. That's not the only game available to download on the 6th, though. If life sims aren't your thing, perhaps the open-ended puzzle game Opus Magnus Magnum is, or maybe Chain Sim World 3, which is a day one launch for Game Pass. There are some other exciting additions coming to Game Pass later this month, too. There's Metal Hellsinger, a punchy FPS rhythm game, You Suck at Parking, a fast-paced chaotic racer where your objective is to park and more. That sounds weird. <laughs> Uh, here's the full lineup for the, I guess, the first half month of September. Disney Dreamlight Valley came out on uh, Cloud Console and PC uh, four days ago. Opus Magnus was exclusive to PC, came out four days ago. Train Sim World 3 came out on Console and PC four days ago. Uh, coming up uh, in three days on the 13th, Ashes of the Singularity Escalation will come out on the 13th. DC League of Super Pets, The Adventures of Crypto Ace, come, uh, will be available on cloud console and PC. You Suck at Parking will come out on all three services on the 14th. Despot's Game will come out on console and PC on the 14th. And Metal Hellsinger will be available on the 15th. It says just for Xbox Series and PC. Uh, we'll get, I'll get back to that. Here are the upcoming DLC game updates coming to Xbox P and PC Game Pass. Dead by Daylight, Resident Evil, Project W, which we talked about, that came out, uh, all these came out September 6th, except for the last one. Grounded, the home stretch update, The Elder Scrolls Online, Lost Deaths DLC, Halo Infinite, The Happening Event, all came out September 6th. Uh, coming out on September 13th will be Fallout 76, The Pit. They're still trying to bring back Fallout 76. Here are the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Perks coming to players this month. Uh, on September 6th came out Wumbleverse Smash Boxer Pack. This perk includes the exclusive Smash Boxer cosmetic set, an exclusive title card background and border, and a 120 minute gameplay fame booster. On the 8th came Dead by Daylight, the Legion and Yui outfits. Explore the backstories of the Legion and Yui Kamara with two Yui rate outfits. The Legion's high, uh, this horror, and Yui's Kumi Daiko performer. Coming out on the 13th is Need for Speed Payback, DLX content pack. Gun edge over the competition with a deluxe edition upgrade. On the 15th is Warframe Twin Gracadas Jade Bundle. Boost your arsenal with the powerful Twin Gracadas, the elegant Jade Weapon Skin, Jade Clem Emblem Platinum, and more for limited time. Unfortunately, these are the games leaving on the 15th, uh, in five days. A Plague Tale Innocence is leaving all three services. Awagami 2 is leaving all three. Bug Fables The Everlasting Sapling is leaving all three. Craftopia is leaving all three. Final Fantasy 13 is leaving console and PC. Flynn, Son of Crimson, is leaving all three services. I Am Fish is leaving all three. Uh, the rest are leaving all three services. Lost Words Beyond the Page, Mighty Goose, Skatebird, and The Artful Escape. Mm -hmm. So, um, are you excited about anything that's coming to Game Pass in the first half of the month? Well... Metal Singer sounds very appealing, especially yep. if it's referred to uh, shooting and stuff. Um, but the game, the game I want to try to finish playing is the Playtale Innocence. If I could try to do one more gameplay before the fifteenth, that'd be great with the, with, the, with you guys on, on the internet. Um, other than that, I can always get a copy. Now, on Steam. Here's the funny part: while the Playtale's leaving on the fifteenth, Steam by the fifteenth, later than the fifteenth, they're selling at Playtale for about. Eight dollars, 
and another uh, one dollar for the for their costume pack. So I think I already bought the copy. I, I think I already bought it last time I checked because I had the money at the time. So I'll try to play that with you guys on the on the PC if it works properly on the PC. My PC that is. So um Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting to continue playing that game, the play till ever since, so yeah, it's yeah. It's, uh, I mean, uh, I have to say, uh, Plague Tale you like a lot better than Edith Finch, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, a Plague Tale Innocence, great game. Um, with the sequel coming, I'm not surprised that it's um, with the uh, with it. Um, but with the sequel coming, I'm not surprised it's leaving Game Pass. Um, oh, yeah, that's I played I it all the way through, so. Um, it's was not it a big ending? loss for me. Huh? Was it Plague Tales had a good ending? Uh, it, it, I wouldn't say a great ending. I'd say a great last level. Like, the ending was, was kind, the ending was fine, but, like, what really was the great, what really stood out, what I really remember is, like, the boss fight. The last boss fight, the last level, getting to that boss. Okay. Because okay. it's basically, not to spoil too much, the last level was kind of like an all-out war between Amicia and her allies that are still alive going to try to rescue Amish, um, Hugo and Amicia's mother. And oh. Hugo himself. Right. So, um, yeah, so this, so, A Plague Tale Innocence, if you haven't played it, you still got, like, about a week, eight days, definitely play it, um definitely recommend it it's a shame final fantasy 13 is leaving i know i know i know the game's like probably a decade old at least um oh, but yeah. but you know i was i was planning on playing it all the way through um i'm not gonna have time to do that now especially between now and the 15th so yeah, i might have to of, pick it up it's a lot to play huh? through for the next five days it's final fantasy 13 yeah so i mean final fantasy 13 it is what it is you know so, um, but the thing is, uh, there's the one thing I have to bring up. Um, I want, that's why I kept this open. Right. Uh, there's something that was just for Xbox series that they mentioned. Um, was it just a game or? Yeah, I got yeah, a copy of uh, Metal Health Singer. Metal Health Singer on the 15th. It says coming out for Xbox series and PC. Mm-hmm. I don't think Xbox Series and Xbox have a different... Um, Xbox One don't have a separate Game Pass. Like, if something's coming out for the series on Game Pass, uh, you can play it on your Xbox One. Because mm-hmm. um, I played... Um, I, um, I'm i going to do a video on Shredders, which is a snowboarding game. Right. That's an Xbox One Series game. But uh, through cloud gaming, it works on my Xbox One. Or at least I got to the title screen. So, you know, uh, Metal Hellsinger, that's definitely going to be worth checking out. Um, Honestly, I really just wish they could keep Final Fantasy XIII up, but, you know, with more games coming, that means more games have to leave. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ready to move on? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. All right. Next. Back for Blood separates itself from its heritage with new story missions. The Horde shooter, with an obvious lineage, is trying something novel in the genre with its second major expansion. When Back for Blood launched almost one year ago, whether you loved it, hated it, or landed somewhere in between, what was never in doubt was where the idea came from. Turtle Rock birthed the co-op Horde shooter genre that these days gets about one or two new games added to it annually. Even its name, Back for Blood, is an obvious callback to Left 4 Dead the common ancestor of the many games like it. But with its newly launched Act 5 expansion included in the game's annual pass, Back for Blood is, shed- shredding it- is uh, shedding itself of its lineage in a way that only its roguish and system previously attempted. New human-like enemies have come to the campaign as part of a mysterious cult that takes center stage in the storyline for Act 5. The Children of the Worm, have a backstory that players will need to uncover through environmental clues as usual in games like this through the newest cleaner. Prophet Dan seems to be intimately familiar with them in a long way that brings conflict to the otherwise close-knit group. 
Though I've not yet finished the new expansion, I've so far enjoyed the novel mixing of the game's common undead. It's specially mutated mini-bosses and these new human-like enemies. That's something Left 4 Dead and most games it inspired never tried. The new Act 5 levels are more intimidating as a result because players need to manage the hordes while also dodging snipers, hunters, and other classes of new smarter than your average zombie enemies. Speaking to the game's executive producer, Leanne Papp, I was surprised to learn these children of the worm are not truly human after all, but neither are they quite like the monsters already in the game. Back for Blood, for me, remained a uh, confounding, ga confounding game this past year. Don't know what that word means. Um, flawed but strangely irresistible, I kept coming back to it to experience its run system when it all clicks, which it does at least some of the time. Alongside continuing quality of life changes, I'm hoping Act 5 can be the start of a new era for the game where it can better stand out from what came before it. You can read GameSpot's full interview with Pat Below, and Act 5 now available in Back for Blood on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Uh, before we get to the interview, I'm going to play the trailer. Just let me check my OBS. Yep. I'm going to play the trailer, and then I'll read what was said in the interview. Sure thing. All right, so... Starting it now. In our victory, we will prevail. He's a prophet, huh? <laughs> a new world will rise from the ashes of old. Wow. He's a prophet, hey, huh? That's awesome. Yeah, I saw this earlier. <laughs> wow. Hey, my birthday, too, August 30th. <laughs> That's awesome. Good birthday gift right there. <laughs> hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Hey, my birthday, too. <laughs> So, GameSpot says, for players following the story, what's going on in the Children of the Worm expansion? Pap goes, in the Children of the Worm expansion, you will counter new enemies that have a human-like appearance. Whether by choice or force, they've gone through something called the Sacrament of the Worm. They're still conscious, but the humanity in them isn't quite there anymore. Uh, GameSpot X, how much lore has the team prepared around the apparent cult, the Children of the Worm, and how much of that will we see in the game? In what ways will we find this story content? Um, Pap goes, there's quite a bit of force for the team has developed for Children of the Worm. You can learn more about them through new weapon and accessory descriptions, conversations between the cleaners, and throughout the environment. It's also a really good way to learn more about the progression of the entire story behind Back for Blood as well. Uh, they ask, the new cleaner seems to have been a cult leader. How does he fit into the group's dynamic? Is he a villain the others grudgingly work with? Pap goes, looks could be deceiving. Who's to say whether or not he has uh, passed as a cult leader? 
As to how he fits into the group's dynamic, you'll have to play to find out. There's plenty of shared dialogue between him and the other cleaners, so we'll leave that question up for your interpretation. Uh, GameSpot X, from a gameplay perspective, how does Project, how does Prophet Dan bring to the game? Well, what does he bring to the game? Excuse me. Pap goes, his perks are definitely unique. There's something about him that makes you want to keep fighting and not give up. It's as if there are only positive things that can happen when you keep fighting the good fight and lending a hand to down teammates. GameSpot goes, it looks like human enemies will make their debut in Act 5. What was it like having to design encounters with humans rather than monsters? Pap goes, the children of the worm may look human, but we assure you there is more than meets the eye there. Sometimes monsters come in unexpected forms, and it was really fun to expand on that. GameSpot says, this expansion also includes new cards to the game's Rogue Light 1 system. Can you describe some of what players will find in their decks? Pap said, some of the new cards players can add to the deck will give them something similar to an active skill. We're hoping this will add a bit of diverse gameplay and help with some of those tricky situations when your team feels uh, cornered by a lot large horde. GameSpot X, how many new levels are in Act 5 and what kind of levels are they? A to B maps, horde-like maps, boss battles, etc. Pap says, there are six chapters in Act 5. You'll experience some of what you're used to as well as some new mission objective styles. We think you'll enjoy it. We know we do. GameSpot X, did the game's original four acts inspire any changes or points of emphasis when creating Act 5? Did you decide some things work or didn't work which led you to certain decisions with this DLC? Uh, Pap said, we always look back on our experiences and lessons uh, learned when developing new content. This is a massive part of our iterative philosophy. With this act, we wanted to continue the story in an interesting way and try out some new environments and mission objectives to keep things exciting and bring out cleaners to new places and experiences. GameSpot X, what new weapons will players find in Act 5? And will these be found in other levels as well, or are they exclusive to Act 5? Pap goes, there's a handful of new weapons for players to play and slay with, such as the Iron Claws, Bow, and Lockjaw. Those, there are also some new accessories, including the Smoke Grenade, Bear Trap, and Bait Jar. Those items will not be exclusive to Act 5. Uh, GameSpot X, does this content update come with a game patch? If so, what kind of fix or changes should players expect? Uh, Pap said, Children of the Worm comes as part of our August 30th update, along with free quality of life improvements and fixes. You'll find the patch notes on, uh, the child on Back for Blood's website. Uh, GameSpot X, should players expect more live events in the months ahead, particularly around Halloween or something like last year's end of year holiday event? Pap said, we can't confirm anything at this time, but we do have a soft spot for Halloween and the holiday season. Uh, GameSpot X, what's next for Back for Blood after Children of the Worm? Pap said, we have one more expansion coming out later this year. Stay tuned for more details on that in the coming weeks. So, what do you think of this uh, new update? Well, I saw the ch show earlier today, and it looked very appealing. Uh, especially sure on my birthday, of course, August 30th. <laughs> I'm 35 <laughs> right now, guys, so I'm getting old. So, But um, it, on, but, but seriously, though, like with the Back for Blood, I thought it would be a, rip a total rip-off and a horrendous launch of of like the, the Left 4 Dead games, because I played Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, co-opted with uh, my gaming confidant and friend, um, Joy Gaming. And him and I, you know, we, it was a good experience playing the first, the, the, those, those two two games. Um, very appealing. So I figured, okay, Back for Blood is going to be a, a cop out of this. But not really. It was a, a, I played the beta back in earlier this year, and it was all right to play, but if I played with friends like you or whoever I know in person or whatever, maybe it's more interesting. So, But yeah, it's uh, Back for Blood, you know, I, gi I give it a good average. It's a good average game, so. Yeah, um, I played Back for Blood one time on stream. Um, it's it's and you know what I love the Left 4 Dead series, especially Left 4 Dead 2. I wish I had the money for all the DLC campaigns because uh, they had like five free campaigns and then they had like fifteen DLC uh, campaigns. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, that's that sales are not Steam though. Uh, well, yeah, that's Steam. Uh, I'm not sure my laptop is powerful enough. It might be. Um, well, I'm sure because well, Left 4 Dead came out back what 2010. Left 4 Dead 2 especially, so... 
Right, well, me, I'm just a console gamer. That's just me. Oh, um, but, uh, anyway, uh, Back for Blood, uh, it's, you know, this is, this is really interesting. Um, so, um, I'm definitely looking forward to this. I don't, I haven't, I've, like I said, I've only played it once, haven't gone back to it yet. Uh, but this is def. if you're just getting into the game now, uh, this is something that's going to be, um, this, there's still more plans for this game that uh, Pap wouldn't uh, comment on. Hmm. So it's not like this is the le final update. Oh, yeah. And so there's definitely something more coming out this year, and then I guess time will tell for 2023. Oh, yeah. Ready to move on? Yeah. All right, next. Um... Let me scroll down. X out then. Call of Duty will remain on PlayStation for three years after current agreement, Jim Ryan says. Hold on, let me just check OBS. Okay. Microsoft announced in January that it was moving to acquire Activision Blizzard for a colossal $68.7 billion, making it far away the most expensive acquisition in gaming history. Now, of course, regulators like the UK's Competition and Markets Authority and the US FTC must approve of this, and those investigations are ongoing. But suppose all goes according on micro to Microsoft plans. In that case, the company will own Activision Blizzard, the publisher and developer behind Call of Duty, Overwatch, Water of Warcraft, and more by the spring or summer of 2023. Shortly after the company announced its plans to acquire Activision Blizzard, Xbox head Phil Spencer confirmed his company's intent to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation following the purchase. He reaffirmed this commitment earlier this month, going so, so far to speak to PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan and promise that Call of Duty will remain on PlayStation even after Activision Blizzard and Sony's contracts have run their courses. In a new statement to Game Industry Biz, Ryan has revealed that Call of Duty will remain on PlayStation for three years after the company's contracts with Activision Blizzard are done. However, Ryan calls this inadequate and seemingly expresses some frustration over the fact that Spencer publicly discussed that he and Ryan had spoken about this Call of Duty situation, calling it private business. Uh, this was the comment. I haven't intended to comment on what I understood to be a private business discussion, but I feel the need to set the record straight because Phil Spencer brought this into the public forum. Ryan's statement reads, according to GameIndustry.biz, Microsoft has only offered for Call of Duty to remain on the PlayStation for three years after the current agreement between Activision and Sony ends. After almost 20 years of Call of Duty on PlayStation, their proposal was inadequate on many levels and failed to take account of the impact on our gamers. We want to guarantee PlayStation gamers continue to have the highest quality Call of Duty experience, and Microsoft's proposal undermines this principle. Mm -hmm. GamesIndustry.biz says it's believed that the current deal between Sony and Blizzard is set to last for the next three Call of Duty releases, including this year's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. It was revealed in February that Call of Duty will reportedly skip 2023's, um, opting to ditch its usual annual release schedule and not release a new game next year. If that's true, and assuming Call of Duty is back to its yearly schedule following that, so a new game in 24 and then 2025, it seems Call of Duty will be released on PlayStation in 2026, 2027, and 2028 with the 2029 game possibly out of the question, according to Ryan's statement. Hmm. Of course, that's just some quick math. And we aren't privy to know the Call of Duty release plans for the next couple of years, so the final Call of Duty year for PlayStation could end up being different, but that's a solid estimate. If previous console iterations are anything to go off of, we might be playing shooters on the PlayStation 6 by then. Only time will tell. Regardless, it's becoming more apparent that PlayStation really doesn't want Call of Duty to become an Xbox exclusive, which makes sense considering it's usually one of the biggest releases of the year, and surely brings PlayStation a good chunk of money. However, it would, wouldn't be surprising if Call of Duty one day does become an Xbox exclusive. You don't spend $68.7 billion without plans to do something big, and making Call of Duty exclusive via the Xbox ecosystem would be huge, albeit unfortunate for PlayStation fans. Do you think uh, Microsoft is in the right to possibly one day make Call of Duty exclusive to Xbox? Hmm. Well... That's that's providing that's providing that the um, 
that the steel goes through, everything's on the up and up. Right, right. Well, it's inevitable because obviously Microsoft wants to dominate the market. They bought studios, they bought companies, left and right, for how many years? And at seven billion dollars, it's this. It's actually gonna be a big waste for yeah. Microsoft. So it's like sixty-eight point seven billion. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of money right there. So <coughs> they'll use that to their advantage to make sure that it will stick with Microsoft's products or line of products, and then rather than through PlayStation, because I, because the other gamers that the people I talk to online often, they tell me like, oh, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see that you know, uh, it's gonna be exclusive. You're gonna say it's gonna be bad for being exclusive to the place to the Xbox and all. I'm like, it's that's how it is in gaming. Like you can't just put every single game on every single console. It's just what's the point of it all of like having the consoles. So it's kinda of like, you know, Phil Spencer may not say much about the matter, but he's 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 optimistic that it will be stuck singing with the with the with the Xbox itself, so of Call of Duty. Yeah. Um I have to say I'm I disagree with Jim Ryan. I think Jim Ryan's blown this out of proportion. Because like they said, due to the math uh, that sounds like we're not. It sounds like no changes are going to be made till 2029. Crazy. It's a very good. Uh, it's a very good possibility that by the time 2029 hits, PlayStation 6 will be out. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I think also Jim Ryan blew this out of proportion. Not just because I'm an Xbox guy, but I think Jim Ryan blew this out of proportion because okay, they offered three more years. What's to say after the three years in 2028? They didn't negotiate again for a longer contract mm-hmm. or for the same type of contract saying, you know, what's to say that one, that three year deal was going to be it. Mm-hmm. Maybe in 2028, they will come out and said, even, you know, said, okay, let's extend this or let's keep it going, you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, for f- Jim Ryan to think that Phil Spencer was going to say, okay, let's sign a 20 year deal after your deal with Blizzard ends. That, if that's what Jim Ryan was expecting, that he's an idiot. Or he's oh, he's over he's overdue with it. He thinks he's he thinks he's in in, in, in the same pot as with uh, the guys like Phil Spencer and Major Nelson and, and even you know whoever in the, in the Microsoft community or Microsoft company. So it's like I don't know, man. It's uh... well, I'm not I'm I'm not I'm not done because uh, uh, I also have one more one other point to bring up. Sure. If Jim Ryan is and PlayStation is so worried about. Call of Duty possibly becoming an Xbox exclusive, why not offer a PlayStation exclusive? Say, hey, for the as long as Call of Duty is still uh, is still on both consoles, we'll offer Spider Man, we'll offer the Spider Man games, or we'll offer you know we'll offer something as a way of saying thank you for keeping Call of Duty on both consoles. Oh yeah, you know that if I was Phil Spencer and I'm not. Um, that's what I would have done. I would have said, okay, listen, 2028 may be the final year, but in 2029, give us a franchise that we could put on, uh, give us a PlayStation franchise that we could put on Xbox so, you know, we're making a trade. You, we're keeping Call of Duty on your consoles because you're giving us something. No knack, no no Jack and Dexter. Just give us something very better than that. <laughs> Well, I mean, Jack and Next. I mean, yeah. I mean, even if it's an old franchise, but I mean, it would have to have new games. Obviously, I don't yes. don't give us Spyro the Dragon, and say, hey, you got the three games from the nineties. That's <laughs> that, that's not, that's no no no. Give us something that's still having uh, games released uh, annually or every two years or every three years. That's PlayStation exclusive. Give it. Uh, give us access to that. We'll keep giving you Call of Duty, hmm. and as long as that you know, I, I, one hand washes the other. It's a great deal. Oh yeah. At least I think it would be, depending on what that franchise would be. Oh yeah. But I mean, but you know, at the same time, yeah. I mean, if you get, uh, it doesn't even have to be a franchise. It could, it could be an ex. It, I mean, PlayStation could pay for Call of Duty to keep appearing on their consoles, saying, you know, hey, we're we're paying part of that sixty-eight point seven billion, um, you know, as long as PlayStation keeps getting Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. But you know, you got you got to give Xbox something. No one, no one would buy six would buy something for sixty-nine billion 
and say, okay, you keep getting part of that for free. For 20 years. Here's a 20-year contract. No, that's not going to happen. Mm. Uh, do you disagree with me? Do you agree with that? or? Well, like I said, I mean... <laughs> Microsoft is it's it's their home home field advantage. They don't the want the what the the property rights and you know Activision of like you know, Activision and Blizzard. So it's like it's their it's their game. It's their it's their time in in the sun, uh, and it's like you know under the sun. Excuse me. And it's like I don't know. It's just it's something interesting that's going to happen for the next five years, and Phil Spencer is going to be right about it sooner or later. So. Yeah, so I'm just saying, you know, if Jim Ryan or anybody from PlayStation happens to hear this, which they probably won't, um, you know, offer something at the after the three year deal ends in 2028, offer something that's offer an ongoing franchise that was formerly PlayStation exclusive, and say if you if you give us if you give if you keep giving us Call of Duty, we'll give you this. That, that would help. That would be even, you know... I mean, I know I'm off using Call of Duty like as a bargaining chip. But if it's more games on different consoles, it's it works out for everyone. Oh, yeah. So, but anyway, um, we'll see what happens... Excuse me, with this merger, with this uh, purchase. Um, and we'll let you know as more news comes out. Ready to move on? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, next. Assassin's Creed games are dirt cheap right now. Ahead of the reveal of Assassin's Creed Mirage, Ubisoft is slashing prices. In need of hundreds of hours of open world RPG adventuring, you're in luck. A new Assassin's Creed blowout sale means Valhalla and other titles are currently super cheap. And don't worry, some of the older ones are massively discounted as well. Okay, um... The sale has launched ahead of, sep- of the September 10th Ubisoft Forward Showcase, where the French publisher is set to reveal the future of the Assassin's Creed franchise. That reportedly includes new details about Assassin's Creed Infinite and three upcoming games, including Mirage, Project Red, and Project uh, Neo Hex. In the meantime, Ubisoft is slashing the price on a bunch of the existing games on Xbox and PlayStation through September 15th. Sorry, PC and Switch players. Here are the games that are discounted and their new price. Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered is $10, where it's normally $40. Assassin's Creed Unity is normally $30, now it's $9. Assassin's Creed Triple Pack, which includes Black Flag, Unity, and Syndicate, Normally, it's $90. Now, it's $22.50. Assassin's Creed Rogue is normally $30. Oh, Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered, excuse me, is normally $30. Now, it's $9. Not bad. Assassin's Creed Origins is normally $60. Now, it's $9. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is normally $60. Now, it's $12. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is normally $60. Now, it's $20. For those keeping track of home, that's every major Assassin's Creed of the last decade for under $100. If you prefer sprawling maps and looting corpses for crafting resources, the three latest games in the series have you covered. But if you want to go back to the more traditional stealth experience, Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered is a perfect one to return to. And if you skipped Unity altogether because it was still broken when Ubisoft rushed it out the door in 2014, it's worth giving a second look, especially with the new frame rates on Xbox Series and PS5. Unfortunately, the Ezio Collection, which includes Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations, is not a part of the current sale. Neither are the smaller episodic spin-offs like Assassin's Creed Chronicles, China, Russia, and India. That was awful, honestly. But you can grab the season passes for Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla for over half off. I stopped keeping track of everything they included long ago. But if you are in desperate need of 500 hours of open world stabbing, there you go. An array of games from uh, 2K have bundled together. Uh, You could... um, Okay, this is something different. Um, So they're giving a... That was like Bioshock... um, yeah, so what do you think of these 
All right, so there's nothing else. Uh, what do you think of these new, um, these uh, discounted Assassin's Creed prices? Well, it's a, it's a good buy. Assassin's Creed Unity, especially uh, for, was it $9, you say? So that's a good price. Um, uh, Unity, know. let me double, let me... Not Unity, let me, uh, Syndicate, Syndicate, yeah. Oh, Syndicate? Um, yeah, that's the one with the said that there's like a transgender uh, character in that game. <laughs> I, I played it. There's no. There's no trans. There is a transgender, but it's not some. It's not Evie. It's not Jacob. Okay. Uh, Syndicate is only available in the uh, triple pack that comes with Black Flag and Unity. Okay, because I already got Black Flag and Unity as part of the uh, SSP bundle back for the uh, Xbox One for about. Well, my mom gave it to me for for as a gift uh, for Christmas in 2014. So that's that's gonna be a lot of money right there all together to try to get that. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. But I only got Assassin's Creed Syndicate last time I checked with the, the games with gold. It was a yeah. gold games with gold many years ago. So I got that's how I got it. Yeah, so it's like you know, Unity. Unity already got uh, Syndicate as part of the games with gold at one point too. So you know, it's it's like it's like the only thing that pops out is the uh, Syndicate and maybe Origins, maybe Origins. Um, so I want to play the, also the one with Cleopatra in it too. I think that's the one I bet you too. Over your origins, right? Or that's a different. Um, game. origins. I don't. I know. I don't think I've actually. I don't know. I haven't played all the way through Origins. I've that I've only had through a free play day or okay. a free play weekend. All right, because I think if you use Cleopatra as part of the uh, the power struggle between Egypt and that of. Uh, What's going on in, in, in Italy and stuff? If I recall correctly, that is this is like ancient times. So, yeah, and Odyssey, but then it, that could also be Odyssey, and Odyssey is on a, is on Game Pass right now. Okay, last I checked, anyway. All right. Um. So yeah, uh, these games. Um. I'm a bigger fan. I do have like Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Two. Um. I have Assassin's Creed Three, uh, the original. Uh. Back when from games with gold um but honestly i'm more of a fan of the oh what uh, when it comes to assassin's creed are you a fan of the stealth gameplay or are you a fan of going in uh all weapons i would say fighting? i would say um i'm not a, big, a huge fan of assassin's creed but i do play it whenever i can i'm still trying to play black flag <laughs> all these years it's been eight years i had black flag and unity and I still haven't tried to beat the game yet of a, of a Black Flag, let alone Unity. So I have to check out Syndicate. So and oh, Origins, saying, and Odyssey, it's like I got so many games well, to catch up on, my friend. And well, I'm asking uh, is, do you prefer the stealth or the older games, or do you, you prefer know, the I'm action of the? I'm still trying to play these games eventually, but you know, it's something where it's like it's not too on my much my A list, you want to call it. So well, what I'm that, what I was asking is, you know, do you prefer the action of the new games or the stealth of the old games? Um, well, I, don't, I can't recall because I, I never really played the first three Assassin's Creed games, especially Assassin's Creed Three. I, ha I have a copy of it, part of the games of gold, but I never gets to play it yet. So, and oh, okay. Assassin's Creed Three is based on the, the American Revolutionary War, so I always want to play that. I have say, sake of history or historical reference, you want to call it. So, yeah, so I, actually, I will play that. Yeah, I got the first three uh, from Assess. Um, I got the first three from Games with Gold. Yeah, I have um, Assassin's Creed One, Assassin's Creed Three, Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, no Origins, though. Was that Assassin's Creed? You, not you. Uh, Unity I already got. Black Flag I already got. Syndicate I got for Games with Gold. So yeah, I got, I got more time and to, the, to buy more of those Assassin's Creed games. Yeah, if I want to play, um, if I want to play Assassin's Creed, I'll have to stick with the older ones. Oh yeah. Um, Unless, except for the, except for what's on Game Pass, um, if something happens and I'm not able to afford Game Pass and I want to play Assassin's Creed, mm -hmm. I'll have to play the ones that are more about stealth, though, instead of yeah. um, sneaking. Uh, Black Flag, back, ah, Black Flag was a lot of fun, on, but uh, there was one sneaking mission I just could not get past, and I would eventually gave up. Um, there was Rogue, which I played all the way through. Syndicate, I played all the way through. Um, yeah, so, but I and like Odyssey is on Game Pass right now. One, two, three, I still have from Games with Gold. Um, but yeah, if you if you're a big fan of Assassin's Creed, capitalize on this sale. Mm -hmm. uh, ready to move on? Oh yeah. 
All right, we still we just got a couple more things to cover tonight. Uh, Disney's Illusion Island is a 2D platformer coming exclusively to Switch next year. Disney and Delala Studios have revealed Disney Illusion Land, a 2D platformer starring Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald, and of course Goofy. Revealed today during Disney and Marvel Games Showcase, and we'll be looking at everything else they announced after this, uh, Illusion Island looks a lot like Disney's Mickey Mouse show that consists of various shorts starring original Disney characters like, well, Mickey and all of his friends. Uh, we'll look at the world premiere trailer, and then uh, I'll read the rest of this article. Should they? Here, here it goes. and retrieve the gloves of knowledge. If others are in need, we should help them. <laughs> Don't you worry, Taku. We'll do it. Hang on. The books are gone. <laughs> it's okay. We'll explain. <laughs> Wait, are those placeholder words or the actual words? Yes. Okay, this is this. You know, I don't have a switch, but I'm interested. It seems yeah. that Illusion Island will be controlling Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy based on what obstacles might be in our way. Mickey, for example, seems to be able to bounce off walls, whereas Minnie has a grapple hook like rope useful for clearing large gaps. Donald can swim. Duh. And Goofy uses condiments. It kind of looked like mustard, but it might also be paint to float and bounce above the stage below. All of it looks like good fun, but it's not all smiles and happiness on Illusion Island. That's because our heroes must endure three trials to retrieve the coveted Book of Knowledge. We'll learn exactly what those trials are when Disney Illusion Island hits Switch exclusively next year. Now, I know we don't have... Neither of us have Nintendo Switch, but is this a game that would make you want to go get one, or...? Um, I feel like I'm too old for Mickey Mouse games, but, you know. <laughs> and I had a son in, in the not distant future, and, you know, Nintendo Switch is still relevant. I'll definitely get a copy, a copy for him and play with him or whatever, but, you know, as I happen to I'm soon, so... You know, it, it is what it is, you know. I mean, don't forget, I mean, I guess I do have my Pokemon games... From like 20 years ago, uh, the Pokemon Yellow and the Strategy Guides and the, the Pokédex book, but uh, I haven't touched that in years now. So it's like, you know, it's, it's the thing of the past for me. You know, I'll pick it up if my if my my son if I ever have a son or perhaps I'm, if I ever adopt the children, you know, maybe maybe I'll buy it for them. You know, so okay. Yeah. So um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Is that it? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, you haven't cut me off much, so. Uh, um, I do play. I I don't plan to get a Switch yet, but like this is one of the games I would definitely get if I did get a Switch. Um, it almost looks like the Sonic Heroes thing, where um, or any Sonic game where he went through as a team because each team member has a different um ability. Yeah. Um, and also I'm I'm surprised you said what you said about Mickey Mouse game when you're a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. I never um, said I was a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> you never said you weren't a fan. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I never said. I mean, I, I will to play Kingdom Hearts because of uh, Final Fantasy some of the characters of Sephiroth and uh, Cloud and all. But other than that, you know, that's what I'd hit. So. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know, I I knew I could tell definitely just by the snapshots that this was going to be based like on the Mickey mouse of the like 1940s 1950s um that style of mickey mouse drawing um mm -hmm. and his uh friends 
So this th looks like a great game. Unfortunately, I don't have Switch, um, but this is like number three or four of ga Switch games that I'm actually interested in that I can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, they had Marvel Ultimate Alliance three, which was exclusive. They had um, maybe Mario Kart eight, maybe not really. Um, not really interested in that. So um, it's 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 just so hard to keep like PS five games that I might be interested in and Switch games. Um, my younger brother has a Switch, and he's coming uh, at the end of this month. So I have to okay. ask him what what um, what he thinks about Switch. Which which games he's interested in, um, but he plays the stuff that's like multi-platform anyway. Right. So I don't I don't think he would be interested in this one either. Uh, ready for the final story? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the final story. This is kind of going to be like a mashup because uh, the final story from Kotaku, everything shown at Disney and Marvel's D twenty three event. Blink, and you might have missed some of the games shown in Disney and Marvel stream today. Okay, um, although it might have felt like kind uh, like kind of funny's blessing, Adioy Junior was talking at 1.75x speed about upcoming games and world premiere. Disney and Marvel's D23 stream event did manage to show a few games that weren't just cinematic trailers. Here's everything we saw at Disney and Marvel's D23 Expo showcase organized in order of whether they had actual gameplay or not. Okay. Uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns. Hey, it looks like Marvel's Midnight Suns got a new release date. Seeing as how it was originally slated to release in March before getting delayed twice, it's nice to see that's coming December 2nd for PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. We also got our eyes on a nice animated short with the likes of Blade and Wolverine tearing fools up. Now, I hear that this game has some sort of important romance mechanic alongside it being Marvel's answer to XCOM by becoming XCOM. Mm -hmm. So I'll be watching this game's career with great interest. Um, okay, uh, why do they do this? Uh, Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora. I hope you are tired of hearing about Avatar, the blue people one, in 2022, because Avatar Frontiers of Pandora showed off a new trailer demonstrating how you can create your own Navi and participate in a Call of Duty-esque deathmatch with your ponytailed comrades. Um, I got the trailer pulled up, uh, so, we'll, so we'll play it, and then I'll continue. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. Yeah. Nice graphics. Yeah. Hmm.
How do you blow up a helicopter with a bow and arrow? Must <laughs> <laughs> got gunpowder in it. <laughs> oh. How do you blow up a helicopter with a bow and arrow? Must <laughs> got gunpowder in it. Alright, so, oh. I mean... Is there not a movie sequel? <laughs> yeah, I, no, it's a game. <laughs> Because we haven't had a sequel yet in like, after like at least, what, 13 years now? So Yeah. No, supposedly it's a game. Uh, while Avatar Reckoning isn't necessarily a new game, we did get to see some new gameplay during D23 Expo. Its D23 trailer described the game as an action-packed MMORPG shooter you can play in the palm of your hand. So if you're in the market for that, this game might be up your alley. This pro... This trailer's only 58 seconds so this will be a short one but uh let's let's watch it see what see what it's about certainly uh let's let's watch it see what see what it's about certainly everyone i'm excited to give you a sneak peek at the upcoming avatar reckoning in this mmo rpg shooter you'll return to the moon of pandora find your own way in the aftermath of the Battle of the Hallelujah Mountains. Hallelujah Mountains? your own avatar warrior. You'll also be able to collect and customize a range of weapons to prepare you for your journey. That's cool. Hallelujah Mountains. Yeah. You'll discover new regions as you unravel a mysterious story, encountering new clans and defending yourself from the perils of the That's cool. From creatures to the RDA forces. You'll also be able to play both with and against others in online multiplayer. Yeah, he's a gateway guy. What the hell? Trying to survive powerful enemies. Or battle in player versus player mode. Oh, this is for mobile devices only. Yeah, he's a gateway guy. What the hell? Mobile, huh? I'm going to afford it. Let alone I have the phone for it. Oh, this is for mobile devices only. Same here, so. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga Galactic Edition. More, more Star Wars characters are coming to a Lego game near you because. Ta because TT Games, I think it, that's Telltale, announced that it's adding 30 new playable characters to LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga in its new Galactic Edition. The Galactic Edition will include six character packs, running you $6 a pop. These will include Cassian Andor, Reva, Captain Rex, and more familiar faces. The Galactic Edition comes out on November 1st for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. I'm a big fan of the Lego games, so mm -hmm. I might pick that up. Marvel Snap. If you were wanting your own Hearthstone with Marvel characters in mind, Aquafina's unmistakable voice just answered your prayer with the announcement of Marvel Snap, a strategy game for mobile. Okay. Illusion Island. We just covered that, so I'll skip that. Return to Monkey Island. Monkey Island's newest trailer was accompanied by the voice and face of Dominic Amato, the voice behind Guybrush Thetford. The trailer tells LucasArts' classic adventure series having a new art style, musical score, and a Nathan Drake-esque journal for you to document your time on the high seas and reminisce over adventures in past games. Monkey Island comes out on September 19th for PC and Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. Disney Dreamlight Valley Dreamlight Valley, Disney's extremely good take on Animal Crossing, is getting an expansion with the toys from Toy Story. I gotta admit, climbing around Andy's room with Buzz and Woody does sound pretty fun, but I was distracted by Mr. Lightyear flirting with Ursula in the trailer. Jesse isn't gonna like that one, Spaceman, you out of pocket. Disney Speedstorm Okay, I know gaming has become inundated with franchises not knowing what to do with their IP and settling on making a cart racer, but Disney's Speedstorm looks kinda hype. Mickey Mouse Tokyo drifting around Sully for Monsters, Inc. probably checks off someone's bucket list. If you're wanting a release date, it didn't have one, and it did list a website where you can sign up for updates and wishlist the game on Steam and the Epic Games Store. <clears throat> Disney Mirrorverse. Disney took the phrase, sometimes it's good to be bad, to heart with its new trailer for Mirrorverse. It's mobile RPG. The trailer's got fan-favorite villains like Ursula, hi again, Hades, Oogie Boogie, and Scar battling hordes of monsters. Marvel Strike Force. 
Marvel Strike Force, a 2018 turn-based RPG for mobile, got a brand spanking new trailer in which all the Hulks, red or otherwise, are stomping a mud hole into abomination. Rest in pieces, my guy. New Black Panther Captain America game. What's better than the Captain America or a Black Panther game? A game in which the two of them are punching out Nazis during World War II. To make matters all the sweeter, the game is being worked on by Uncharted series writer Amy Hennig. While the trailers skimped on the gameplay for easter egg references, the concept behind the game is definitely promising. I also answered the wriggling question in the back of my mind as to whether Cap's politics weren't of the times with America's sentiments towards my melanated brother. Respect. Uh, Aliens, Dark Descent, the last game to actually have a trailer. If you're one of the folks, uh, most I know it's not showing, but um, on this website, most of the games had just snapshots, not actually trailers. Um, if you're one of the folks who forgot that Disney technically owns the Alien franchise, hi, hello, it does. And it's working on a new game called a- Alien's Dark Descent. It's a squad-based real-time strategy action game in the Alien universe. And it looks like you guide your squadron of Marines inside narrow corridors of derelict spaceships while blasting Xenomorphs. Um, let's... Well, look at the trailer. The last trailer that last game that actually had a trailer. Mm-hmm. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. found the relay, but there was a problem. Get that door closed now, Private. Close that Close that gate. Nothing gets in here. Ray didn't make it. Release us with peas. Willis, take the lead. found was a new kind of evil, and it found us first. I a smart guy. This was a human. I a smart guy. <laughs> That's okay that yeah so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I would I don't know I, it's a simple it's a squad based RTS strategy game I'm not I'm not totally um turned off to those so um yeah it, de- it depends Marvel World of Heroes it looks like Marvel saw what Niantic was getting up to with Pokemon Go and said Marvel fans should take a break from Twitter and go outside too Huzzah! Marvel World of Heroes is an AR mobile game in which you can take a break from touching grass to pull out Doctor Strange's sling ring and patrol your neighborhood for scurn and villainy. Be careful not to get arrested. Gamers have a bad rap as is. (laughs) (laughs) 
and last, Tron Identity. I I'm a mit I was born in 96, so I had no clue what this was until Kotaku's Zach Zuizen chimed in during the trailer's opening seconds by typing Tron in our Slack channel. So yeah, it looks like we're getting a new Tron game in Tron Identity. Apparently, it's a visual novel. It's got a nice typeface. So, um, any of these games interest you? Um, well, the Aliens game looks, looks very interesting. Because uh, I heard bad things about the previous uh, Aliens game, Aliens Colonial Marines. Horrible yeah. AI of the Aliens and such. I don't know what they were doing, but they fucked it up. But this one, I'm sure need to put some kind of effort into it. Um, it seems good. It's a... Uh, Fucked up at the end when I just saw her. <laughs> he's putting his recording shit. <coughs> Excuse me. He's just recording his testimony. All these aliens yeah. come out of nowhere and just like, what, to kill him? Screw it up. But, yeah, so, but they said it's going to be a real time strategy, so, like, you're going to have to move your uh, characters around and make uh, choices. Um, I've, I've become a big fan of those games since Valkyria Chronicles 4. Oh, yeah, I heard that game was good. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so I'm not I'm not totally turned off to the real time strategy genre as I used to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this Aliens game looks like it's going to be great. That's definitely one I'm interested in, also. Oh yeah. Um, it's Avatar, the Avatar game. game. Yeah, not that that's the first one. Not the not the mobile one, but the um, other one that also seems interesting. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, so um, Marvel and Disney have a lot going on, um, and we'll, we'll let you know how these games turn out when they eventually do uh, release. Yeah, too bad I cannot afford the, uh, the Avatar game, uh, because uh, it looks like a sequel to the, to the movie from 2009. After all these years, I'm hearing that now the creator of Avatar, he's going to make sequels over the next several years, which has been about now about five years now. So hopefully by 2024, 2025, we'll see some sequels of Avatar as movie sequels, you know, so. Yeah, so um, do you have anything else that you want to bring up before we end things tonight? Um, not necessarily. Uh, I've been doing, been busy with schoolwork as always, and uh, on the weekends my time to record with you guys, like Friday, Friday, and Sunday. So I'm going to do one more recording tomorrow for uh, most likely either Prince of Persia or Metal Gear Solid 4, because I just got the, let's say, I got PS3 as a donation from one of my friends in Texas, so it's, hopefully I'll be a good experience when I play it again. Um, yeah, that's about it for the time being. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to be doing laundry tomorrow, as I do every Sunday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, also recording this um, so I can add the clips to bit shoot like I normally do. Um, but yeah, this was a short episode, but you know, with everything that came out at Gamescom, you know, the reason we had so many so much stuff to talk about 2 weeks ago was because Gamescom had just happened. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but you know, 2 hours it's it's what we usually do did during the old days, so it's not so it's not extremely short episode. Mm -hmm. Um anyway, on um, in two, our next podcast will be in two weeks. That's on September 24th at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, as far as tomorrow, do look for a specific video, depending how long this takes to um, record and upload in parts. Um, I was watching Lord of Patriarchy stream. He did um, from like two nights from like last night, and he did a tier list on wrestling video games. Um, since I played most of the games on this tier list, I'm going to do my own, and it's going to be the first one I've ever done. Okay. So I'll be uploading that to BitChute uh, when I do it. Um, also giving my quick opinions on most of the games. Um, but yeah, and uh, tomorrow I'll either be playing Tom Clancy's Sees the Division, or if I'm able to get a Let's Play of that done, I'll be streaming Shredders which is supposedly an Xbox Series game, but it's possible through the cloud on Game Pass. So. Right. So, yeah, so um, I hope you enjoyed this. Follow me if you did. Also, check the About section of my Twitch profile. There's a link to my bit shoot where I do Let's Plays and upload clips from this podcast. We also 
um, check out my Bonanza store where I sell records, video games, game informing magazines, and more. And hopefully I'll see you on my next stream. Uh, until then, good night, everyone. See you guys later. Have a nice night.